here's my problem with the any cubic cobra 3 that nobody's talking about the main thing that i've seen on youtube is people talking about just how great this printer is and that hasn't really been my experience i'm gonna go into the issues that i've had with this printer along with the things it does well First and foremost, I want to cover the things that I've seen from other YouTubers, which is that this printer runs faster than the Bamboo A1. And I don't have a full-size A1. I do have an A1 Mini. Um, so I ran those head-to-head. -head. The Cobra was a few minutes faster for a single-color print anyways. Um, but realistically, I would say that they're basically the same speed. The Cobra doesn't run any kind of auto leveling or calibration or anything like that, really. Whereas the Bamboo does. Also, Bamboo has sport mode and ludicrous mode, which makes it go very fast. Um, this thing does have a sport mode, but uh, I haven't really noticed it doing anything all that different. Um, so the Cobra is slightly faster, but the prints I don't feel like turn out as good. So it doesn't really matter if you can go fast if the print isn't turning out good. Now, before I go any further, I want to go through the biggest differences between the A1 and the Cobra 3, and then I'll stop talking about the bamboo altogether. Both of these machines came together assembled. The A1 Mini was a little bit more assembled, though, because you don't really have to put anything together. The only thing really was the uh, filament spool holder. Apart from that, you just had to unscrew um, some screws that were keeping everything in place during shipping. And then you attach a couple plastic things for the AMS, run the PTFE tubes, and then you're pretty much good to go. Just plug it in. With this, uh, I would say um, the print head didn't come attached at all. You had to attach the screen. Uh, it didn't come with a camera, which I ordered it with a camera, but I contacted AnyCubic. They said I've still got about another month to wait on that. I also didn't receive the filament in because I did the whole um, printer, filament, and camera bundle. Didn't get the filament with it. I have since gotten it, but I emailed them first, so I don't know if they just forgot to send that to me or what. Either way, um, yeah, it's got a lot more stuff that you have to assemble with it. And once you do have to assemble it, uh, you kind of have to get everything tuned together. You have to tighten up the pulleys on it to make sure that you don't get any uh, layer lifting. The first thing that I don't like about this is it's got a little silicone cover that goes on the front that covers up the USB ports. But if you have the ACE unit plugged in, this is just always open. Also, if you're using USB or anything like that. So why bother even having that? It just, aesthetically, I don't like that. My first print on this machine was this. It did not turn out great. As you can see, I had some severe layer shift issues. So I went through and tuned it, got everything tightened or loosened, ran it again. And I'm happy to say it got slightly better. Now I had thicker layer layer shift, tuned it again, still better, but still having layer shift. That kind of kept being the theme for a while. So I kept going through, making adjustments, did some adjustments, and then recalibrated the machine, auto level, all that jazz. And I was finally able to get a full complete print. So the this print did finish all the way through but i don't love how it turned out and 
we still have some layer shifting issues. For comparison, this is what it's supposed to look like. So we did have a lot of stringing, which I'm not too worried about that. What I am worried about is stuff like this. The hole that you can see. Oh my. And you can see there's quite a few holes in there. So... I had to go through and do more adjustments, do more leveling. I had to mess with the Z offset and it took quite a few prints before I was able to get it dialed in. No, that's not my camera being weird. This was very few layers, and we had some really bad layer shift on it. This was my first attempt, and then I went through and messed with the Z offset. Got that. And after messing with the Z offset and doing another auto leveling and calibration, we were able to get that. Much better. Much better. With it all dialed in, I decided to go through and do a slightly larger multicolor print. And I did a Godzilla head. I opened the slicer and tried to import my 3MF file. And it said... It said something along the lines of there's zero value for this file. Basically, it can't read it. There's nothing there. So I had to go through and basically hand paint it in the slicer, which you have to use the any cubic slicer unless you are good with uh what is it? Orca slicer, which I am not. So if you can make your own profile in Orca Slicer, you're probably fine. But if you have to use the Any Cubic Slicer, it is not great. You don't get the option of doing any infill flush or flush to another object. So that means... That you get this much waste for this much object. This didn't even finish printing, and this is the amount of waste that I have. Now, it didn't finish printing because it kicked so much of this out that it ended up clogging up my little uh, box that I made here and ended up going onto the nozzle, and you can see making these fun, almost marbles. So that ended up failing, but we were three quarters of the way through the print, and this is how much we had for this much. That's a lot of waste. And I don't like that. So this was realistically my first attempt at a multicolor print. Here's the thing that I don't like with it, is you can see the layer lines. And that's something that I feel like nobody's really talking about in all of the multicolor prints that I've seen, is how visible the layer lines are when you're switching colors. And I don't love that.
Now, this was a rough failure. I was a little bummed with this not turning out all the way. I think it had the potential to be very cool. But I switched over to Pet G. Um, I think after that, actually, hang on. I did this 0.04 test on it. And this is one of the worst ones that I've had. And I think the main reason why is we get these weird, you can see it almost looks like a heat wave going through it. This thing does not do seams very well at all. But if you go through and get it lined up with the little heat waves and the seams, it fits perfectly fine. But you have to line those up perfectly. If you don't, it's much more snug. On the smaller one, eh, it'll fit, but just barely. But it works. So, as you can see, not the greatest print quality. So, went through, tensioned the belts again, got them a little bit better. A little bit better. And decided to do a test run with Pet G filament. I was watching my first layer go down very nicely. Very good translucent blue filament. And all at once it started going very badly. Now, when I saw it doing the correct first layer, I went off and started doing something else and kind of forgot about it for about a half hour, maybe an hour, and came out to find this. This is a beautiful piece of modern art, and that is the silicone from my nozzle. That is that shape that you're seeing. So this was all the way around the nozzle. And this was the worst failure that I have ever had. Now, sure, that's on me for not staying there for it to finish all the way. But first layer was going down pretty solid. And uh, it did not make it very far past the first layer. <laughs> To say the very least. I did have a nice outline of the dragon that I was trying to print. Uh, but this got all the way up in there, guys. Since then, went through, got this all the way cleaned out. And I have not had too many issues. Knock on wood. Since then. Um, I went through and... Like I said, got everything calibrated and ran this little possum. And I'll put the video of this guy up. Now this is a lot better than what we've seen before, but this still isn't perfect. Now, what does that tell me? That tells me that this is not a machine that you start and it just works. 
like some of my other machines. This, I think, is going to be a machine that if you are willing to put the time and energy into tuning it, it's going to run flawlessly. But if you don't put the time and energy into tuning it, keeping it tuned, keeping it 100% maintained, you're going to get this. So after I got this successfully out, I decided to see, okay, how well does it do with an entire build plate? So I loaded the build plate up with these guys. And again, the print quality is not super great. First layer didn't even come out all that pretty. But I think you have to adjust the Z offset more often than I do. Like I said, this thing does no calibrations for you. You got to do it. And just on whatever the normal setting is. The slicer does not have the easy right click and fill bed plate. So you have to go through copy and paste copy and paste and you got to sit there and fit them all on the on the slicer don't love that so there's kind of quite a few things on this that i really don't like the slicer being the number one thing i think a lot of this too could just be slicer settings but if you put the option in there to do auto leveling on the slicer before you even run the print with every print, I think that's going to vastly improve the quality on a lot of these. Um, that's realistically where I think this machine running faster than the bamboo comes into play, because the bamboo does the auto leveling, auto calibrating, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think this does a quick auto level, but a very quick one, and you're running within just a couple minutes of hitting remote print. Um, it is Wi-Fi capable, so that's cool. The uh, ACE unit over here doubles as a filament dryer box, so all four of your rolls are being dried at the same time. That's pretty cool. But another thing with that is it doesn't have an option that you can just tap on the unit. It should just have a little dryer button that you just push that, but it doesn't. Instead, you have to go to your touch screen on the 3D printer and tap it in there in order for it to work, or go through and use the slicer, which the slicer is very non-intuitive. Um, I really wish that they just had it on this unit. It already has its own plugin, so it already runs on its own anyways. Why do you need to have the slicer in order to make that be a dryer? I don't care for that. But it is what it is. So, don't like the color scheme. It doesn't have lights set up around it. Does not have lights here. I know it looks like it because I've got my light bar set up right there. Um... It's got an LED on the nozzle, but no lights around it, and no camera, even though I ordered a camera. For this price point, I really feel like it should have a camera. It was basically 500 bucks. There's no reason for it to not have at least a basic camera. Um, I don't know if the one that I ordered with it is going to attach to the machine, or if it's going to be like Creality does, where it just sits on the outside and you have a little tripod i really don't know um i don't know what to expect from that i know there's an option in the uh slicer to be able to use the camera but i don't know how well that's going to work i'm realistically just more waiting for orca slicer to have the ability to run this thing from there and I'm probably just going to end up using Orca Slicer. And I think that's going to solve quite a few of my problems. 
Um, but this this feels very much like a hobbyist machine. It feels like it's great for tinkerers. I don't know that it's necessarily ready to be used as a print farm yet. I do like that for an open bed slinger, it's really not very loud. It's not overpowering by any means. It doesn't uh, doesn't shake the table too lot too much, but it still has a pretty good speed to it. Um, it's got a very sleek, modern look to it, but I kind of liked the old color scheme better. Whatever. It looks like they were kind of just trying to copy the A1. Um, so, if you're just a casual user, maybe wait until they get the slicer figured out. If you already have one, I would say get on any cubic to... Uh, Get on any cubic. Tell them that we want a better slicer for this thing. Because I do not like the slicer. It is not intuitive and it needs a lot of work for sure. So any cubic. Do better. Make us a better slicer. We want it. We need it. Especially for multicolor. I need the ability to flush into infill, flush into other objects. We need to be able to mess with the purge settings on this thing. We need it. Get on them. Um, these are the main things that I had issues with. All in all, I think this is a decent machine. I think it's going to be a lot better once they get some updates rolled out for it. Um, right now, you know, this is a pre-order machine. So early access, if you want to think of it that way. I think they still got some bugs to work out. Uh, I'm hoping that by the time they get this thing fully launched, or if it is fully launched already, that, uh, you know, we can get some updates to this software. I needs it. But, uh, yeah, if you guys found this information helpful, I'd appreciate it if you throw this video a like. Helps me know what kind of content you're looking for. Uh, it helps if you subscribe to the channel as well. Um, but uh, big news, I have started putting stuff on Etsy. So go check out my Etsy store. I'm going to have a link for that down in the description and pinned in the comments below, as well as a link to pick up one of these machines if you want one as well. They do have it available on Amazon now. So I'll be posting a link for Amazon as well as directly at the Anycubic website, whichever you prefer. I would assume Amazon does it faster, but usually Anycubic will throw some bonus stuff in there um, or have some better discounts than Amazon. Either way, I don't think you have to pay for shipping on this thing. Um, so yeah, we got the Etsy store live now. Um, it's also got stuff from my other business, Barks and Bullets which is reflective dog bandanas. So feel free to check that out. Pick one of those up. Um, last thing that I wanted to show you was the print that I did have turn out well. And even that, I don't fully love how it turned out. You can see we've got some gaps in the spacing or in the lettering here. Um, and this was not a super huge print right there but you can check the detail on it i think i need to fine tune it more i think that's my main issue you can see we've got our seam up here maybe you can't see that there we go seam right there and that goes all the way through and I don't like how it does the seams, but you can even see we've got some issues right there. But all in all, first layer pretty much came out fine. Top layer, I gotta, I gotta figure out the settings with this thing. Long story short, it is not a printer that just works. You gotta make it work. And if you like a machine that you gotta make it work, you're absolutely going to love this guy. I don't recommend it for beginners, though. 
But if there's anything that you want to see on the Etsy store, let me know down below. I'll have a link to the printer, the filaments that I use, even the ones that did not turn out great. I'll have a link for that pinned in the comments and in the descriptions down below. Let me know if there's anything that I missed or anything more specific that you want me to go into detail over. And thanks for watching. Bye.